Finally, Pisces, thanks for your patience. If you have been waiting, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Mercury, Mars, Rising, North Node, South Node, whatever, uh, Pisces energy. This is the August reading. Starting with the current transit, so the Sun is currently at 18 degrees Leo, the Moon is 28 Capricorn, Mercury 10 Virgo, Venus 28 Cancer, Mars 29 Taurus, Jupiter 8 Retro Aries, Saturn 22 Retro Aquarius. We have the full moon in Aquarius tomorrow. It's going to peak at approximately 8.35 p.m. in San Antonio, Texas. The full moon, the last super moon of the season, will be conjunct Saturn, and it will be squaring Uranus and Taurus, so it will be quite intense. Technically, we are currently in the energy of the full moon. Starting with the new thing, candle wax divination, Pisces, August 2022. You're feeling lonely as hell. You're feeling disconnected. There may be one person in your life that you confide in, one person you feel like understands you, but this person is not romantic. This is not a romantic sexual relationship. This is a friendship. It could be a friend, could be a relative. Um, let's see. I see a microscope. Hmm. I see a cluster of grapes and I see a microscope. I'm seeing Cancer and I'm seeing Sagittarius. Seeing Scorpio. Dancing. There could be dancing, there could be celebration. You could be going out with friends, going to a club, going on a cruise. There could be a wedding, going to a wedding. Seeing Mexico, tropical Mexico, a resort such as Cancun, Cabo, okay. And I'm seeing a faucet, faucet dripping water. I'm enjoying this. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. It's pure intuition, but I'm having fun with it. Okay, what I've learned, or a recent epiphany, is that whenever you're feeling stuck in your life, you're feeling stagnant, you're just bored with yourself, you're bored with life in general, look to your opposite sign or clues or the opposite of your moon sign for clues so it can be the opposite of your sun or in my case my moon because I feel a lot of times I feel the Virgo energy in my chart a lot more than I feel the Aquarius because as I've said at this channel, I've said it at Patreon, I've said it at Siren Tarot, uh, my belief, and this is from years of research and 
observation life experience my belief is that the moon is a lot more important than the sun that's certainly the case in my chart because my sun is at the anoretic degree of Aquarius 29 it only makes a few aspects it makes a mediocre trine to my Uranus at 22 Libra it makes an exact square to my IC MC axis 29 IC I see is 29 Scorpio, MC is 29 Taurus. My moon is in the first house, it's on my ascendant, it makes a lot of aspects. So anyway, so my moon being in Virgo, I like to micromanage, I like to control my immediate environment. It really is ridiculous how intense I am about food. Um, when I go to visit my mom, she doesn't have what I require. And I can tell her, you know, I like to make smoothies. I basically live on smoothies. Smoothies are a staple. That's just, that's not going to happen. At, at her house, there's not going to be the stuff I need to make a fucking smoothie. So, at the very least, I like to have green tea, green tea bags, and lemons. So at my mom's, it's just, it's Sabotage City. Um, she and her husband, her third husband, they're both Geminis. It's just, it's a lot of um, junk and they're just, they're not conscious. They're not conscious of what they eat. So I have to, I have to be proactive and I have to just take my fucking green tea and my lemons when I visit my mom. Um, so... Whenever I feel like I need to really relax and let go of this very rigid need, this, this urgent need to control my immediate environment, to have this thing and that thing, I look to Pisces because Pisces is a lot more laid back and go with the flow than Virgo. The big Lebowski comes to mind. He seems to embody the Pisces energy. The dude abides. Um, so, I don't know why that just came to me, but I was just thinking, so you have something in Pisces. Um, if you're feeling like your life is in disarray, if you're feeling unfocused, you're feeling like you're just, you're living in limbo and there's no structure, no stability, maybe look to Virgo because Virgo tends to be hyper-organized, hyper-structured. Okay, the Literary Witches Oracle. These cards are ridiculous. They're so fucking hard to shut them. Creature's paw. Before I go to the book and read what it says about creature's paw, just using my intuition. So I feel like it's glib to say you're fascinated with the occult, with the supernatural. I mean, of course you are. That's Pisces. Pisces, Scorpio. With those two signs especially, I would say there is a fascination with the occult and the supernatural. Maybe you're ready for Halloween. I know that I certainly am. Went to Dollar Tree yesterday and I saw the Halloween stuff and I was giddy. The fall is my favorite time. I love Halloween. Dia de los Muertos, Samhain, and my son's birthday is in November. That is my favorite time of the year. Um, 
but going beyond the obvious, the obvious association. You could be in this energy of just um, you're feeling playful. You're feeling like shaking things up. You're ready for a surprise. You want to be jolted out of complacency, maybe. Let's see. With Mercury and Pisces, my Mercury and Pisces makes a tight square to my Saturn and Gemini. There is constant second guessing, and I have to just get over that, you know. If I want to provide content to YouTube, and I have, I have several channels. I have this, and I have Siren Tarot, and I have these little whatever channels where I promote my art and my books. Um, you know, I've gone way beyond that, just second guessing. Oh. How will people react to this? Oh, people are going to hate this one because I talked about myself too much. I, I get that constantly. You talk about yourself too much. Um, I just, I go on. I just persist. I just uh, do these readings as I want to do them. And I will never have a huge following. And I'm just accepting that because I can't be anything other than authentic so don't ever tell an Aquarian what to do how to do it I mean I grew up with that being micromanaged by my mom and my maternal grandmother and so whenever I get that at YouTube I just I just dismiss it creatures paw okay hmm I was way off creatures paw the other Friendship, forgiveness. See, I don't get friendship or forgiveness when I look at this. Going out of your comfort zone, doing what terrifies you. Because to me, this is this is creepy. This is not especially friendly. What I think of immediately when I see this, my first thought when I saw this card was the monkey's paw. Uh, this great horror story. I'm sure there have been variations on it, but this horror story that I read when I was a kid about this couple that lost their son. Their son died and Somehow they got this monkey's paw and you tell the monkey's paw your wish and their wish was for their son to come back. And so their son came back from the grave as a zombie. So careful what you wish for. All right. What is going on with Pisces? Six cards for Pisces, August. 2022 and I say August I feel like it helps maybe I don't know the views are terrible at this channel I feel like maybe it helps to say August you know to provide dates but, um, you could watch this reading at any time it could resonate you could watch this reading and have absolutely nothing in Pisces it could resonate um, I found that inexplicably the readings that resonate with me the most whenever I'm watching the Zodiac readings are Capricorn. I have Mars, Jupiter, North Node, and Vertex in Capricorn. It's my fifth house. The Chariot, Cancer, the star, Aquarius. The 
three of wands, the empress, five of cups, six of coins. You're wanting to reinvent yourself. I see a relationship that ended badly. You're still energetically connected. You're not feeling great about yourself. You weren't ready for this relationship to end. It may have blindsided you, taken you by surprise, caught you off guard when this person wanted to end things and you're hurting, you feel rejected and you're still connected. And you may be thinking of doing something superficial making a superficial change, like getting a haircut, a new hairstyle, a new hair color, getting a tattoo. Um, maybe you're thinking of losing weight. You're just feeling gross. You're feeling yucky about yourself and you want to make some kind of change is what I'm getting. You're feeling restless you're feeling this push. You're feeling like um, you're supposed to be in a relationship. You're trying to replace this person. You're trying to fill the void. You could be on a dating app, dating apps. You could be all over social media trying to get something started. Please clarify the chariot over the empress one card. Wheel of Fortune. All this major arcana, it's just this really restless energy. You're feeling very itchy, very unsettled, very unstable. Please clarify the star over Five of Cups, one card. Two of Wands. There could be a job that is not gratifying at all. You don't feel like you're living your purpose. You're just doing what you have to do to make rent, to pay your bills. But it's joyless. It's not exciting. Um, I'm seeing a break room and there's this huge television and the smell of burnt microwave popcorn. And you don't feel connected to your coworkers. It just feels gross and you want out. You want to make exchange. You want to make a change. You want to take a risk, go out on a limb and do something different. Maybe go back to school, get a certification, a license, get a new degree. Please clarify Three of Wands over Six of Pentacles, one card. Seven of Swords. You're strategizing. You're trying to be methodical. You're trying to plan this new life. And this is random. This won't resonate with everyone. That's impossible. Not a personal reading. But what I'm seeing is that you may have moved. You may have relocated to be with someone. You might have met this person online. It was long distance. You moved to wherever they are. And now that the relationship has bottomed out, you're thinking, now I'm stuck here in this place where I don't really want to be. I came here because of the relationship, because of the person, and I don't want to be here anymore. You might be going back to your hometown or your country, your state, whatever. Um, I'm seeing a lot of movement. I'm seeing transition, and it's not comfortable. There's a lot of irritation. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of anxiety. Um, just this very restless energy is what I'm getting. 
Please provide an energetic summation for Pisces. Three additional cards. The Hermit. I know it's hard. Five of Coins. I know it's very difficult. Judgment. But if this resonates at all, if your life truly is chaotic right now, you feel like you're just swirling around in this tornado, you're going to have to find some stillness. You're going to have to carve out some space, some time, and just breathe in and breathe out. Just turn off the chatter, the noise. And I was saying something similar for might have been Aquarius. I don't know. If your life is this much in chaos, it really is not a good idea to be living on social media and to be broadcasting things to whoever is watching your stuff. I would be going in. I would be going radio silent. I would be checking in with myself, my higher self. I wouldn't be telling the world what's going on. I wouldn't be um, eating my heart out on Instagram, you know, seeing how other people have these wonderful, glorious lives. They're in these wonderful relationships and they're going to Paris and they're going to Fiji and they're going to Costa Rica. They're going snorkeling. They're going scuba diving. Their third eye is just wide open and they're having all these revelatory... <laughs> Wonderful experiences. I can't do social media, and it's mostly because of envy. It is. It's because of Five of Pentacles. I feel like, fuck, I'm stuck in this. The last thing I want to hear about is this person's soulmate wedding and their honeymoon in Cabo. So I do YouTube, and that's it. Um, but if you're in this place where your life is just up in the air it's chaotic I would definitely do a social media detox and I would just really amp up the alone time breathing in breathing out scribbling in journals I just got this in the mail yesterday my newest journal right in time for the full moon in Aquarius and I write fuck all you know uh, Bible verses not a Christian but Bible verses and um, recipes, astrological transits. This new channel that I'm watching, this woman, she's talking about Neville Goddard. I just bought the Neville Goddard collection at uh, Amazon. She talks about Law of Assumption and she mentioned this Bible verse, Romans 120, and I wrote down because it's a continuation, Romans 1:20:21. For the invisible things, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. <clears throat> And their foolish heart was darkened. And I wrote down, Is it a shit world? No, it is a glorious God-speckled world because I fucking made it. What she's talking about in a lot of her videos is that the Bible is an autobiography. Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell speaks to this. Hell, um, the Bible is our story. It's really controversial. Some people grapple with that. I was brought up Southern Baptist in Texas. I get it. I get why people would grapple with it, but we are all creator gods. We create our reality. So I can click on this little uh, temperature on my computer, this little sun, and I can see all kinds of shit news um the woman who recently ran a red light in california and she killed six people Anne Hache, 
the actress, she ran into someone's house, drove her car into someone's fucking house, and now she's on life support, I guess. She's in a coma. Um, how many uh, mass shootings have we had in America just in 2022 alone? You know, I can just immerse myself in the shit. I can read all the the shitty, badly written news stories. I can um, watch the Kardashians, but why would I? Why would I read the news, watch the news? Why would I watch the Kardashians? Why would I? be happy for Kim and, and her latest plastic surgery and, and her latest boyfriend. You know, why would I, why? So we choose what we choose. We choose what we put out there, what we allow in. I have to be extremely careful with my energy and my boundaries. I have been in hermit mode for five years. There's no end in sight. I don't want there to be an end. I stay in this room and I read my books and I write books and I shuffle cards. Nothing fancy. I create art. Over 2,000 designs uploaded to Redbubble. I work. I produce. I burn my candles. So all of that is just to say maybe write a new story, create a new life, because I don't see how you're satisfied in this energy that I'm seeing right now. This energy is very chaotic and it's not gratifying. So what I've said again and again at this channel, at Siren Taylor, at Patreon and client readings, it's the truth. We have to find the best cards in the deck in ourselves, first and foremost. We have to find the Ace of Cups, the Two of Cups, the Nine of Cups, the Six of Cups, the Ten of Cups, the Four of Wands, the Lovers. We have to find paradise in ourselves before we can find it with someone else. If this resonates at all, I wouldn't say it's a priority to get into a relationship. It's not a priority to find the one. Uh, find yourself. Find your light. Find the God in you. And Asaki Shangi for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. I found God in myself. And I loved her. I loved her fiercely. That's what I have for Pisces. I hope that helps. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out.